Thank you for tuning in to the reading produced by Black Spectrum Network. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell button to get the latest updates on this channel. You can purchase a private psychic reading by going to www.blackspectrumnetwork.com. If you want spiritual guidance to learn how to work with your ancestors or you're interested in deepening your spiritual experiences, then subscribe to our Patreon. You can get these and other videos at least one week ahead of their YouTube release date. That's patreon.com forward slash Black Spectrum Network. All right, so we're going to get into the psychic reading about the music group High Five. Um, is anyone uh, familiar with this music group? Uh, do you all remember them? Um, they had the song, I like. Um, I like the way you kiss me when we're playing the kissing game. I like the way you keep me looking forward to another day. All summer long. Okay. All right. So um, the first thing that I'm going to ask is uh, how was the group formed? Um, so let's see. How was, let's look at how was the group formed? Oops. The deck is upside down. So. Okay, so um, I'm not really familiar with uh, the names of these group members, nor am I familiar with the history of the group, really. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I just I do know uh, the song um, I like because Dondria covered it on YouTube years ago. All right. So um, the first card is saying that the group was formed. Um, it looks like every every group member um uh, every member of this group um it seemed i would i definitely want to say that they all had a um uh uh an intertwined destiny but uh if there's a lead if there's a lead um singer of the group um there's a lead singer of this group he was the one that brought them all together um i get that he was the nucleus um of the group and um I think I get about four people in it. I'm, I'm sorry, you all, I didn't do um, my research. But um, I get about maybe four people in this particular group, but um, the lead singer being the nucleus of it, um, him being the one that came up with the idea to um, for, for them all to work together and um, also to get there. Because I'm, I'm seeing them recording um trying to record uh little demos and mixtape samples and i'm also seeing them um practicing with one another and um i don't i, I don't know if it's like a i don't want to say like a garage area but I, I i get a garage or and i'm also seeing like an apartment complex as well um they their success was rather uh they they achieved uh, well, I, I see them acquiring um, a record deal uh, rather quickly, um, shortly after they started working together. And I'm also seeing here that um, I'm also seeing here that they the group was was always dysfunctional as well. I'm not sure if they ever really got along um, as a as a team. I feel like um, they. I feel like this this is a group that they felt like they were siblings and there was a lot of um, rivalry between them. Um, I do also feel like they bonded over trauma. I get that everybody came from, um, uh, every member of the group had a dysfunctional childhood. I'm also saying that when the group, um, uh, everybody was worried. Um, I, I see them. Uh, I see. Yeah, I see. Obviously, I see the car for worry, but I see them mainly being worried about how money was going to be divided between all of them. Should they achieve the the success that they have been wanting? Um, uh, some other things that I see with the group's formation is, is just that this was they it was uh, a, a quick rise to the top. I uh and, and when I say to the top, not just the top of the charts, but I see a, a, them quickly acquiring a record deal, them quickly getting on the radio and, and um, 
uh, getting themselves out there. I see it's, uh, you know, these are um, young people that were thrust into the industry quite early. Um, but I see them being, uh, I see uh, this group being formed because of the idea of the of the lead singer doing it. I'm not exact, I'm not getting that the parents were pushing their children to be, um, I'm not getting that the parents were pushing their children to be musicians. Um, I am seeing a, a female who, I am seeing a female who was responsible for managing and promoting um, the group as well. Um, she also invested into them, but um, I'm seeing her as, uh, I'm also saying that she's a greedy woman as well. So I don't think that she paid them um, a lot. I think that they, um, I, I think that um, they have a story where they weren't a, a, a typical story where they weren't exactly thinking long term. Um, they weren't thinking long term. They were just thinking about the fame, the celebrity. They weren't thinking about the uh, long term wealth and having uh, residual income from their creativity. This they struggled to maintain their cohesiveness um f uh, from from forming themselves to like from the i mean from the group forming itself to being solidified to um being on the radio they were always they were i'm always i'm seeing constant cattiness um amongst them and i'm saying that the the people on the outside um i'm saying people on the outside not wanting to invest into them because they can't it's like they they they're i'm saying it's like it's gonna i'm saying it as it was going to take too much work to to train them um to appear as though they liked one another um it's you know they got what they wanted this this group wanted very quick success they wanted to be on the radio they very much admired um uh, boy bands that came before them and I'm saying that um, once they got on the radio that's when they felt that they were they had made it um, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying it as the the popularity meant more to them than the money did all right so that's uh, the group's formation all right so let's see um uh, uh, name you all's this uh, favorite. What are you all's this favorite boy bands? Um, you know, it doesn't matter the the time period, but what's your favorite boy band? All right, so now we're gonna ask. Um, you know, was there a curse or a hex on the group that caused their misfortune as adults? Because there's. Um, Everyone, uh, I think everyone in this group is 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 dead. So, was there a hex over the group? Let's see. Was there a hex over the group? It looks like every member of this group was emotionally like imbalanced. Um, I'm saying them as like, I'm saying all of them bonding over trauma. I feel like every member of this group was a victim of some, some form of abuse. They, I'm saying that, um, I'm saying that these, these cards are really telling me that they it's it's not a hex or a curse it's just generation is generational pathology i'm saying that had they not been musicians they probably and i hate to say this i pro, i get that that they would try to they may have tried to found a, an escape through drugs or um through through crime um I'm saying that they were very creative. I'm saying that um, I'm saying all of them had a lot of creative potential, not just the ability to sing, but I'm also saying they had the ability to 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 dance as well. Um, I'm saying the potential for for uh, for 
uh, contracts to model off clothing as well that they could have had. Um, but I get that they were too young to have experienced that type of success, um, that it was too much for them. And I'm also getting that, um, I'm saying that the, that they were all raised by their mothers primarily. And I'm feeling that the absence of their fathers also affected how they, um, also affected how they wanted to, to, um, hustle their way to the top. Um, I'm not getting that all of their I'm not getting that all of their fathers were absent. I'm I'm saying it as some had fathers that were married to their mom and some some had moms that were just perpetually single. Um nevertheless, I'm saying that they all bonded over having um feeling like they were all siblings to one another. Um Let's see. A hex or a curse on this group. Um, there's definitely a love. Okay, so there's a thing. There's a message that love can kill here. That I'm seeing. Um, I'm seeing that. Here's a main group member again. I'm saying that the main group member was girl crazy, but he had a lot of influence over the other members of the group. Um, I'm also saying that the lead singer may have made the most money. Um, I'm just seeing him being the head honcho. So it's kind of like uh, his his problems became everybody else's problems. How he dealt with things was how everyone else chose to, to deal with things. Um, it's... it's I want to say like a monkey see monkey do. Okay, now we're speaking about the magic. These these are okay. They were these are kids that were born into unfortunate circumstances. I, I get that these deaths definitely could have been avoided, but there isn't any magic um, involved here. It looks like the there's this is more about. Um, It's, these cards are speaking more about like chromogenic strains and generational pathologies um, and how these pathologies can be uh, passed down. Um, I'm also saying that um, I'm also saying that the main group member may have been. Uh, I'm also saying that the main group member, like in, in his DNA, um, he's he's. It's, it's like he's predisposed to being emotionally imbalanced. Okay. Um, so the next question is. Um, the next question is, uh, did something malicious or bad happen to any of the members as children while in the group? Um, I said this earlier, so I, I guess I've already answered the question. So we're going to be getting um, some more specific information about why um these well you know let's see let's just see what happened to them as children what can we what can we learn about what happened to them as children what can we learn about what happened to them as children yes okay <clears throat> all right so um, yes, I am saying that I, I'm just starting it off. Yes, absolutely. Um, all, uh, th three of the group members, um, victims of, uh, emotional abuse. And I'm also saying that, um, I'm also saying, um, they also had sex. They were also sexually active at, at young ages as well. Um, You know something? One of the um, one of these one of them was in, was at a I'm getting like like thir maybe thirteen or fourteen years old. One of the group members was involved in an intensely emotional relationship. You know, um, feeling like they were really in love um, with a with a young woman. Um, but I am saying that that they were victims of. Em uh, all victims of um, emotional abuse. Um, 
I'm also saying that they I'm also saying I'm seeing one group member that I, I wish I knew names you all I'm sorry but I'm saying one group member that has like a form of PTSD from seeing someone uh from seeing women being abused um and almost killed they are all spiritual they were all spiritual Um, I'm seeing that one thing, one thing that I'm saying is that they're six, they, that the, um, in their, like, um, in their destiny, they were supposed to acquire their success over time. And, um, they they were supposed to acquire financial success over time. The popularity is fine, you know. Them being, you know, quote unquote, one hit wonders. Could, they 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 had the opportunity to to do different. Um, and what I mean by that is is they could have extended their fifteen minutes of fame had they had had they had the proper mentorship. Um, they they weren't mentored by anyone, um, and I'm saying that they. Were, they were children struggling through a lot of uh, dis, uh, a lot of dysfunction. I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing tempers flaring, as well. Um, I I I get it. Is um, if there are three or four group members, three of them were on board. I get that three of them were just following the three that aren't the lead singers. Um, those three are just um they followed I, I guess you could say they followed um whatever the, the the lead singer did or said um i'm saying the lead singer being this older brother that may have let's see let's see how did he how did the lead singer um influence the rest of the group in terms of their childhood Yeah, the lead singer portrayed himself as someone that had gotten over his issues, and he was the one that was mainly focused on the money. He was like, "Look, we can get, we can, you know, man, we can get through this. We, you know, I, I hate that happened. Um, I'm sorry that happened." He he was he was the he was a paternal figure, and I'm also saying that. Um, everybody in this group wanted to be married and just. That's the other thing. I, I get that they all wanted to do different than what they had seen um, from from the adults in their life. Um, they wanted to, they really wanted to, to make money and, and, and make sure that their moms were okay. Um, so yeah, I get that they were all, um, I get that they're all victims of abuse. They're all victims of abuse, and one um, in particular is very traumatized by a lot of what um, he saw his uh, mom endure. All right, so we're going to look at the childhood of Russell Neal. We're going to look at the childhood of Russell Neal and his brother. Um, his, his brother's not in the group. So let's look at the childhood of Russell Neal. What do we need to know about Russell's childhood? Okay. Um, so um, it... Okay, so it looks like Russell's mom um, put the most responsibility on him. Um, <clears throat> it looks like it looks like yeah, it looks like Russell's mom put the most responsibility on him. I'm also saying that um, he may have ha he may have had a father that was too invested um, into uh, his his wife's private life and very suspicious of his wife cheating. Um, I'm, I'm seeing them. I'm saying I'm saying that they were together, but not together at the same time. Um, like they were uh, maybe common law married, 
Um, I'm also saying, um, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying where they had the two children together, but I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing the parents together. I'm not seeing the parents with each other, but they, I get that they, the parents may have lived in the same house with one another. Um, I feel like the mom, I feel like it's the mom that had, um, may have had substance abuse issues. Um, that's what I'm getting. Let's see. Russell. Let's see. What else do we need to know? Did the the father might did the father die? And uh, when the children were younger, and I, I feel like Russell may have had to raise his, raise him and his, uh, raise himself and his brother. Um, I'm also seeing that um, I'm seeing them going hung. I'm seeing them going hungry some nights. Um, Russell and his brother were extremely close. Um. Russell felt like his little brother was his twin. Um, I'm also seeing that um, Russell also felt like the other group members were his his, his family as well, but he felt like um, they were family that were meant to make money with one another. Yeah, they inherited. Um, they inherited um, some. I guess you could say they inherited um, um, mental illnesses from their parents. Um, I'm getting that these mental illnesses were exacerbated because of the way that they grew up. I'm seeing that the the father was mainly responsible for making sure that the family was taken care of. Um, I feel like the mom may have died of a disease as well. Um, yeah, the mom may have died of like a um, she may have um, contracted a, a sexually transmitted disease. Um, I'm saying it as, but I'm saying it as, as they love their parents though. Um, I get it. I get it as Robert Neal learned from his parents. Like he saw that his parents didn't operate as a unit and he, he's, that's where he learned the we're better together than apart mentality. Um, and I'm also saying that that, that was his, like, he, he loved family. Um, he, he was, he, I just get that he was, I get that they were born into circumstances that are, you know, completely terrible and menacing, to, menacing, but, um, it was Robert Neal's materialistic attitude that was motivating, him to be successful. I'm also getting that um I'm also getting that um let's see. It's something it's it's about aha, I got it. Robert, like, uh, I maybe when the father passed, um, it was either the one of the parents passed, but once one of the parents passed, um, Robert was the one that assumed the response. He assumed the responsibility uh, of the of the missing parent. It's like the mom passed away, then he became the dad. If the dad passed away, he became the mom. But either way, that um, he was parentified at a very young age, which 
qualified him to be, um, uh, I guess you could say, a leader to the other members of his group and especially to his little brother. But I'm getting at his little brother. What is it with his something about his little brother that up oh, the devil card came out? OK, his little brother addicted. I get that his little brother may have been addicted to sex um, and sex and love and um, that led to him being uh, addicted to drinking. I get that his uh, Robert had to always keep his little his uh, I don't know if it's his little brother, but I get that Robert always had to keep his brother from um, just trying to flee, escape, um, just leave, uh, uh, not trying to leave the country, but just trying to uh, run off with some woman, get married and um, and not be in contact with anyone. Um, he was uh, I, I get that he was he was always afraid that he's like, you know, I don't. I don't know if my brother is going to off himself. I don't know if my brother is going to be okay. Um, I just need to keep a keep an eye on him, and he loves to be in love. But he gets when he gets heartbroken, you know, he's down in the dumps. All right. So, why did the Neil brothers kill their wives? Let's look. Why did the Neil brothers kill their wives? I'm reading these questions as I go. So I I was just talking about suicide and, and them being a little bit off. So I didn't know the next question was going to be this one. Okay, so why did they uh, kill their wives? I'm saying that I'm saying that their wives were also um their wives I'm getting that their wives were also um I don't want to say um dealing with any types of uh, mental illnesses but I want to say that their wives were um weak-minded um because these guys it's like they obviously had issues and these and it's like their issues were like you could see them it's like you could see crazy from across the street but these women ignored the signs um now that's that's i'm, I'm still building up um uh, why this happened It's issues trying to get issues with trying to trying to control the women. It's it's that they were the women. They felt like the women would be their uh their wives would be flighty. That their wives could run away from them at some point. And I get that they had been abusing them to keep them, you know, caged and keep them uh, caged in the house and keep uh, to surveil them and also, um, uh, I, I get that they they wanted to. Uh, they were trying to use different intimidation tactics to um, control these women. I get that they learned this f from the father. Um, and I feel like this drove the, their mother to um, the substance abuse or some form of prostitution. I, 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 there's a pimp mentality that these gentlemen had when it came to love and relationships they they're very passionate lovers but they also were set, you know they were misogynists they were misogynist men so let me um let me do another shuff, another shuffle about this so let's um see what why were these why did both of these gentlemen kill their wives Why did both of these gentlemen kill their wives? I 
I feel like Robert killed his wife first. And then his brother did. Um. All right. So from okay. So from the cards, I get that one. Um, I feel like Robert killed his wife because he questioned the paternity of his child. Um, or the woman was pregnant either she was pregnant or he was questioning the paternity of a child that he was already having and for better or for worse um this woman he he knew that this woman had been cheating on him he was assured of that and he's one of those he's definitely one of those gentlemen that um will get violent if he feels that you are stepping out on him um, I'm also saying that he he blacked out. I'm saying that Robert blacked out, and I'm saying is that you know his wife's stories were inconsistent. If they weren't making sense, he felt like she was ruining the relationship between them. Uh, there was no way that they could move forward, and he he aggressed her. He aggressed her. I'm getting. I I, I want to say like asphyxiation. Maybe he choked her out. Um, I'm I'm not good with uh, seeing um, murder. Uh, well, I'm not trying to be great at that at, in this particular reading. But I, I get maybe there was a death by asphyxiation. But he had been beating her. Um, she was trying to defend herself, um, but he overpowered her. Um, He overpowered her, but I get I get that he had been hitting. I get that there was definitely like he he was definitely fighting her at certain points. Um, I, and I'm, I'm I feel like he punched her in the in the neck as well. Um, I feel like they had children together. If they did, they saw it. They definitely saw it. Um, okay, now it's talking about the second wife. The second wife. Not the second wife. Um, it's talking about Robert's brother's wife. So, he felt like the relationship was over. Okay? He felt like the I th she was trying to leave him. Um, okay, so the brother's wife was died because she was trying to leave him. And... He felt like that was his soulmate. He didn't want to. He didn't want to part from. Um, she threatened to take his money, and and he's he he he. She threatened to take his money. I get that. That um, a lot of people felt like. A lot of people felt like he was, uh, she was never really in love with him, and that she was just with him for the money anyway. And I feel like that um, he had been denying those things um, to other people, and I feel like he had been abusive to her because he wanted to force him to love her or force um, her to be more intense about her or more dramatic about how she displayed her affection to him because he needs he needs things to feel very intense, but. Um, he didn't want he didn't want to see her go. Um, that's how I'm seeing it. All right, so um, we're going to uh, get into some um, more questions. All right, so the next question is: Let's look at the childhood of Tony Thompson. What can we find out about Tony Thompson's childhood? Hit the skull emoji if you're enjoying this reading. Let me know if you're enjoying this reading. Let's see the childhood of Tony Thompson. Um, 
Okay. Um, okay, Tony Thompson was... Um, okay, Tony Thompson liked to drink. Um, I get that he was drinking at a young age. Um, I get there may have been a lot of alcoholics in his family. Um, yeah, um, a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, drug uh, people that consume um, a lot of alcohol, um, and, and I'm also saying hard drugs as well. Um, I think that Tony was. Um, I think Tony was sexually active at a very young age as well. Um, I want to say he's the victim of statutory rape by women. Um. He was the one that was in this intensely. I don't know if I said earlier it was the lead singer, or if if but or if I just said it, it was uh, arbitrarily said some member. But um, I get that he was definitely in an intensely um, emotional relationship at a very young age with a with a woman. Um, I I think that he had children at an early age as well, maybe. Um, but he may have kids he he doesn't know about. He comes from a family of addicts, and he's um he was a loner. Um, he was quiet, and he. I get that. He has um, a few fond memories of a grandparent that that died when he was young. Um, also, also, I'm saying that I, I I get that, like I said, I get that he was a loner, um, and I, and I get that he um, he was artistic, um, just very much a uh, very cerebral. Um, and he spent a lot of time in his head processing what was going on around him um, and, and, and making um, making quiet and quietly negative judgments about the people that he was around. Um, let's see. What else do we need to know um, about his childhood? His mother, um, I don't know if his mother knew who his father was, and I, I get that his mother had the, she had a, uh, she was she she played an important role in his life. Uh, she was an, a very important figure for him. Not and and he, I don't get that he worried about his father as much. He did. Um, He was definitely told to be quiet and to shut up a lot um, as a child. Um, and I'm getting that he may have had uh, he had a temper, but um, I get that his temper was doused by the men that were around him because most people didn't pay him attention. So he just learned how to keep it to himself. Um, he keeps the, he kept his passion hidden. He. um I'm also saying that he, even though he was quiet, he knew how to fight. Um, and he had to fight. I also get that. Um, I also get him. He he was depressed. He, he started um, um, being depressed around maybe 12 or 13, sleeping a lot. Um, take, and and, and uh, finding himself always procrastinating. Okay. So... Let's see. Gonna do another shuffle here. Quite interesting about this group. Um, glad I did this reading on high five. Okay, how did Tony get hooked on drugs? 
Oh, wow. <laughs> Next question is, how did Tony get hooked on drugs? All right. So how did Tony get hooked on drugs? How did Tony get hooked on drugs? Um, so to explain this to you about why I'm so surprised by these questions, um, I have people that are constantly sending me questions to ask, and sometimes I just copy and paste them into the Notes app on my phone. I'll scroll in my phone and then just pick celebrities to do psychic readings on, and I, I typically won't really look at the questions. Um, so these questions are surprising me. So how did Tony get hooked on drugs? As I said earlier, um, I feel like he grew up in a family of drug addicts, but... Um, what I'm seeing from these cards are that um, what I'm saying from these cards is that Tony drank. Tony was a drinker at a young age. I think I said that earlier. Maybe I, I don't remember what I say after I say it, but um, I'm getting that Tony may have uh, been a drinker at a very young age, and I'm um, I'm getting that um, he I, I I get that again. This is pathological. It's it's, it's learned behavior, um, uh, learned helplessness is the concept. Um, you know. There is a generational curse that he's affected by the, the 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 drug abuse, the need to constantly want to escape into another reality. Um, I'm also seeing that I'm seeing that the depression caused the 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 childhood depression is what caused him to seek out these you know uh, these psychedelic escapes. Um, he loved cocaine. I'm saying that cocaine was, was, uh, definitely a, his drug of choice. I get, you know, I get that he, I'm also saying like, maybe he, he had injected himself as well. Um, cause I see a couple of needles. Um, but I'm mainly saying is like, um, cocaine and, um, These cars are are saying that these cars are, are are just basically saying that he was always on drugs. It was like he was always around drugs, and I, I get that. And here here's something else that just came through, and I want to make sure before I, I pull. So I'm just gonna ask: um, when he was a baby, were there drugs in his system? Um. He he was not born with any type of alcoholic fetal syndrome, but it's like it's not it's to be no there were no there were no drugs in his system, but I get that um I get that his I get that prior to and then after being pregnant, his mom you know was definitely using drugs um but no there were no drugs in his system when he was born okay all right so let's uh look at the next question um how did tony become the father of 16 what the fuck is this correct how did Tony become the father? Oh, how did Tony become a father at 16? I said, I thought this shit said, how did Tony become a father of 16? I was like, 16 motherfucking kids. How did he become a father at 16? Was it a groupie or a girlfriend? Was it a groupie or a girlfriend? Damn, I'm really on point with this motherfucking reading that I'm feeling. Like, I feel like I'm just over here giving y'all BET unsung. Hit the skull emoji if you're enjoying this reading. Um, how did he become a father at 16? Girlfriend. Um, this wasn't a groupie. This was a girlfriend. Um, 
This was the yeah. This was this was one of his girlfriend. Well, this was his girlfriend, not one of his girlfriends. Um, yeah. Uh, just sex at a young age. I I just I get that's what it was. Sex and being in love at a young age. And I feel like they. This was the girl that I was talking about that earlier when I said he he was in a relationship at a very young age that was very um, emotional. Um, I'm breaking this down. I'm getting this shit. I'm proud of myself. Come on, bitch. All right. Um, I'm also seeing that he didn't want to be a father. Um, and he accused her of having multiple different potential fathers um, in the neighborhood, but he knew that that was his kid. Um, at the end of the day, he knew it was his kid. He, I don't. I get that she was loyal to him. Um, he was thinking about his money from having a baby because he knew one thing he knew for sure was about child support. He also saw that this as a generational thing. He's like, you know, my ki- he. I think that he was a ch- he. His parents had him when he was young, so his babies having babies having babies. So I think it was just you know at that time he lived in a family where it was a badge of honor to be a thirty two year old grandmama. Um. But yeah, this was a girlfriend. It wasn't a groupie. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely not a groupie. Um, this girl, this girl felt like she belonged to him. Now she didn't feel like he belonged to her all the time, but she felt like this was her soulmate. Um, and she was very loyal to him. Um, so yeah. Tony had him a little girlfriend. Okay, so. Was was Tony secretly gay or bisexual? Was Tony secretly gay or bisexual? Was he secretly gay or bisexual? Okay. Um, I do get from these cards that he was bisexual. Um, I do get that he bisexual. I see, I see an attraction to women and to men, and I see both being on his mind. Um, definitely into masculine men, and definitely into men that were uh, on the down low, but um, into women. I wouldn't also. I'm I'm not reaching when I say this, but I also get that there may be there there. I don't bisexual yes but i also get that he may be in the he may have been into both trans and cisgender women um let me see i'm getting that um i'm getting that his develop uh his attraction to men was something that he began to act on in his early 20s Yeah, he felt like because he had a child that he was straight. Um, And he never, let me see. Yeah, he was into anal sex. And I feel like there were, there are women that was, that were suspicious of his sexuality because of that. Um, He also spent a lot of time giving women oral sex as well. I'm saying that he he he's somebody that like he's someone that um with women he was uh more passive and more sensual but with men he was a lot more aggressive with men a lot more excited to be with a man than a woman because of the the it, it's it, it was such a it was like a a rare delicacy for him um Hold on, we got something really interesting. Okay, what's really interesting here is that I get the I get that his I get that he fantasized a lot about being with a man and a woman. Um 
Yeah, he fantasized about being with the man and a woman. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was for all intents and purposes bisexual. Um, I feel like. I feel like with men, he was someone that he's like, you know, I feel he he needed to get his itch scratched. Um, but women, he had romantic connections to them. Um, with men, I feel like it was just to, to get himself off to, you know, um, it's like, you know, I, I have this uh, fantasy that I need to act on. You know, I have the semen building up and I need to get it out. All right. Um, what were Tony's last days like? Well, I guess there are other group members that are still living because the next question says, uh, I'll talk. Okay. So, well, the, all right. His last days. Um, this is sad. Um, it's like he didn't have anything. Um, he he knew, he, he knew his last quote unquote last days were coming. Um, he planned, uh, I don't know if he's the one that committed suicide, but, um, I'm seeing that he felt he felt like he was never going to be happily married and happy with himself. He didn't feel like he had control over his life. He felt that he had also let down his family. He had let himself down. He didn't feel that he was connected to God. Um constantly failing to have a successful relationship drove him to um, his death. He, um, he had, if he's the one that committed suicide, he had been attempting it for, um, he, had, he had done it multiple times. Um, I mean, just with the Iku card coming out first, um, In his last few days, it's like he gave it's like I see himself give I see him saying, you know, I got 48 hours to die. Um, not I have 48 hours to live, but I have 48 hours to die. All right. Um, do the remaining members feel guilty or responsible for Tony's death? So I guess there are members that are still living. Do the remaining members feel guilty or responsible for Tony's death? Yes, they do. They do. They feel like they failed him as a friend. They feel like in um uh, for they feel like they failed him as a friend uh in in the practical sense that they they didn't um they weren't there to support him that they didn't listen to him. They, you know, enabled him as well and they didn't take seriously their they're like, you know, we, did we really take seriously our friendship where we why were we like were we really listening to his problems? Um um I'm saying it as they also felt like they felt like he was going to they felt like he always put women in between them, though. They they questioned, you know, they, they were at a point where, like, you know, he's a grown man. If he wants to put if he wants to put pussy between um, partnership, then that's him. But we're not going to continue trying to be there for him like that. Um, I'm. They, but they do they do feel responsible like it's like a after the after the fact we didn't realize his cries for help and we didn't see that him being defensive was his was also a cry for help and we could have rescued him but we didn't we didn't because we expected him um to cooperate with the women that he's always with and occasion himself up and to share his share what he feels with them they feel like they could have traveled to have seen him as well that um they they felt like but they were also they had also grown tired of constantly um rescuing him like this guy was someone that intentionally would try to drown himself and they felt like it wasn't their responsibility to constantly try to rescue him all the time um all right so 
I'm going to ask our final question. Did the group members see any pedophile activity when they were working with R. Kelly? Hit the skull emoji if you've enjoyed this reading. All right. Did the group members see any pedophile activity? Did they see any pedophile activity when they worked with R. Kelly? Oops, I don't know how the card is still in there. Um, yes, they did. Um, they did. Um, they saw him. I guess with girls that were like their age, yes. Um, and the and 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 yes, it is. Um, it's like the girl. It's like there. I'll put it to you this way. R. Kelly made sure that I hate to say it this way, but R. Kelly made sure that everybody had a girl. Um, so it's like if he worked with the group and they may have um, performed at a concert together, it's like, you know, hey, we're going backstage. Everybody's got a girl. And R. Kelly had one as well. Um, they did see it, but I'm getting that they didn't process it at the time is, is wrong. Um It, the cars are saying like they were there is like they were children and and it's like they were processing they weren't really pro they weren't really processing everything that was going on but i do see it as r kelly being the one that orchestrated um for the the orchestrated for the uh the group members to have sex and then yeah he he also they they um saw him with a groupie or two but no they didn't see any of you know the more vicious stuff that we know R. Kelly for, uh, such as keeping women hostage. All right, so that was a lot for this for this reading, man. Wow, that was a lot. Okay, um, I want to thank you all for tuning in to the reading produced by Black Spectrum Network. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell button to get the latest updates on this channel. If you can, uh, you can purchase a private psychic reading by going to www.blackspectrumnetwork.com. If you want spiritual guidance to learn how to work with your ancestors or you're interested in deepening your spiritual experiences, subscribe to our Patreon. You can get these and other videos at least one week ahead of their YouTube release date. That's patreon.com forward slash Black Spectrum Network. Before I go, I leave you with these words of wisdom, wisdom from the rapper Dreezy. Gave mercy to these hoes. What would Jesus do? I'm your reader, Nick Zoe, and the truth is always collaborative. Thanks for watching. Bye. So fuel my fire, take me high, I'll be your liar too. Cause when we're here, there's nothing better than the sky.